When working with shapes and other objects in PowerPoint, there exists some very useful keyboard shortcuts and control features that you may not have seen. Let's look at three areas of controlling PowerPoint shapes and objects. We'll look at sizing controls for shape objects, how to change shapes to other shapes without losing existing customizations, and lastly, the fastest way to copy and paste objects as well as predictive alignment. Let's start with inserting simple shapes. We'll go up to the Insert ribbon, and then under Shapes, we'll pick something like a rectangle. This gives us a crosshair where we will click and hold in what would be something like the upper left-hand corner of the rectangle, and then drag diagonally. Now this allows us to create any type of size for the rectangle. We can make a short, wide rectangle or a tall, thin rectangle. But what if you want to make a perfect square? This can be difficult to try to eyeball. So if you hold down your Shift key, now when you drag left or right, or up and down, you'll get a perfect square. This works for other shapes. So say you wanted to get a perfect circle, we'll choose the oval shape, and then click and hold and start to drag, and you can see we can create any size oval we want, but if we want that perfect circle, again, this can be difficult to eyeball, so I'll hold down Shift, and now when I drag up, down, left, right, or diagonal, I'll always get the perfect circle. This works for every type of shape. So if I went back up to shapes, and let's say I wanted a perfect heart, I would choose the heart shape, hold down shift, and when I drag, I'll get that perfect heart. When it comes to resizing your shapes, let's say I've drawn that perfect square and I want to resize it. If I grab my corner resize handle, I'm back to the freeform type of resize and I've lost that perfect square. So don't forget, you can hold down shift and then you'll maintain that perfect square aspect ratio. But notice how the resize is taking place from a fixed corner. So if I had taken this square and put it in the dead center of my slide and I wanted to keep that position, when I resize, I'm no longer in the dead center and I'll have to move and relocate my square. When you're doing a resize and you're using a corner handle, if you hold down the control key, this will do a resize at the center point instead of the corner. Now notice how I'm in this free form resize. Well, this is where you can pair up the shift along with the control, and so that way you get a centered resize that maintains the perfect square. If you use a side handle for resizing, this will resize one side while the other side remains fixed. But if you hold down control, then you can resize against the center point, and that way you won't lose your center position. Of course, if I tried the up-down, I could resize this way without losing my center point. If this were a perfect circle in the dead center of my slide and I wanted to make it larger without losing position, I'll grab the corner resize handle. But this not only doesn't maintain aspect ratio, but it doesn't maintain the center. So I'll hold down control. This will allow me to maintain my center, but then I'll also hold down shift to maintain my perfect circle. Now suppose you have a shape that you've spent a fair amount of time customizing with the perfect color and the perfect border and the perfect effects, but then you realize that this isn't the shape you really should have selected. You want to change the shape to something else, but you don't want to lose all your customizations. If you select the shape and go up to Shape Format, in the upper left-hand corner we have Edit Shape and then Change Shape. So you can go back into your shape library and pick any shape in the library and with a click, change it to that shape and retain all your current customizations. So I could go back up to edit shape, change shape, and I can pick a happy face or edit, change shape and pick a lightning bolt. Now our last trick will revolve around duplicating shapes. Now this can be done with any object in PowerPoint, but I'm going to use this perfect blue circle as our example. Suppose I want another perfect blue circle right next to this one. You could do what most people do, which is something like right click copy, and then come over here to some empty area and right click paste and then you'll get a second object that you can move and put into position. Or, a faster way is to select the object by clicking on it, and then press Control D for duplicate. Now the first time you do this, it's like doing the copy-paste where you just get another one slightly off-center of the original. But here's a great trick. If you would like to have several of these, make a copy for the second one, and then get this one into position. If you then do another Control D, it will mimic that alignment and distribution of the first one. 
And so I could do control D, control D, control D, and each of these are all on the same plane and perfectly spaced. You could also do this in a diagonal fashion. If I take the original circle, control D, make a duplicate, and then I'll put it just below and just to the side of the first one. Now if I do a control D, control D, control D, they're all just below and just to the side. So now you could kill two birds with one stone by not only duplicating the shape, but also getting it into the proper position and not have to do all the alignment and distribution steps. And while we're here, now that we have multiple shapes, let's look at the change shape feature again. But now if I select all the shapes on the slide and then go up to shape format, edit shape, change shape, when I give one of these other shapes a click, all of the shapes change to that. So I can go back to edit shape, change shape, and with a click, I've updated all my shapes. So hopefully you found these techniques useful for sizing, copying, and changing shapes in a PowerPoint slide. Thanks for watching, and remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.